I will go into some historical details, institutions, social issues. Anyway, um, I will consider some concepts and met metaphors uh, that are essential for uh, an explanation uh, and not only for a description of uh, an historical process. Um, I had to int I introduced some, as I said, concepts and metaphors like a typology of economic ideas that is not at all original, uh, but this, uh, um, splitting uh, theoretical ideas from doctrinal ideas, policy ideas, and popular economics. Uh, in the written version of, of, of the paper, I only uh, use, in fact, the, the uh, first two types of ideas, theoretical and um, doctrinal. Uh, because they are the most important for uh, to analyze the import of ideas. Of course, in, in respect of economic policy, there are also some import of ideas. Uh, in the period I was considering, the Mussolini experiment, the battle of the grain, was just uh, transplanted for Portugal. It, it was a, an idea about economic uh, policy. But that, uh, that was an, an, an exception. Well, others... Um, ideas, uh, conceptual ideas I have implicit in the text is the idea of a, a relation uh, core periphery or in particular cases of Portugal, semi-peripheral uh, country. Uh, yesterday uh, we had a, a little discussion about the, um, the, the meaning of this metaphor, but uh, I, I use it. Also, uh, more um, um, the idea of market of ideas. Uh, I know that Vitor Neves <laughs> is quite disguised uh, of the, that idea, but um, I use also, of, of course, I think that in this case, market here is, has a very special and abstract meaning. It's, a lo it's an abstract local of changing ideas because we have costs but no prices. We have no uh, fixed points of equilibrium. Um, uh, we have both um, what we could say um, capital goods if uh, the ideas are used to produce new ideas or final products if they are just uh, transplanted. Uh, and we have a visible end uh, that are strategic and social interests. So this so is at least a very, very special kind of market. But uh, uh, I used the, the word having in mind that um, the analogy, the metaphor, has very limits, very important uh, limits. Finally, I use the, uh, the concept of scientific field, uh, more or less directly from Bourdieu, that I think it's uh, a very interesting way or to, to conduct to lead the, the research. Um, as you know, in the paper, I, I put a, um, a formal definition. Oh, yeah, Peter yesterday introduced it and showed it in a, in a slide. The idea of um, uh, scientific field of Bourdieu. I used some more qualifications to adapt it to our purpose of economic ideas. Because Bourdieu has, as you know, extensive literature and papers and books on artistic fields, political fields, and so on. Uh, scientific fields, but n not specifically on uh, our our business <laughs> the, uh, of uh, economic ideas. Anyway, there are some sociologists that develop the idea in our f uh, in the field of uh, economic thinking. One of them is a book with ten years about is Jean Yves Caro. He, the book is named Les Economistes Distingués. It's about the social dialectics inside the economics cluster. It's a very uh, interesting book. And the quite recent book of Le Baron, uh, whose name is uh, Les Croyances Economiques, Economic uh, uh, Beliefs. Uh, that is specifically a study of the economics field in France, because uh, the re reference of th that ideal field is not a closed field, but is a national field, um, uh, supposed to be permeable to um, foreign uh, influences, other way it, it will not be useful to study the import and export of, um, of uh, ideas. Well, those concepts and metaphors are used. 
but not discussed or explained really here. The, the empirical part and the, 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 the <coughs> of the paper, it's about um, Portugal uh, we, in a very specific moment. It's the end of World War II because there was a moment, uh, a shift in the, everything in the world, uh, namely with the uh, hegemonic, uh, the coming of hege American hegemony the, and the collapse of uh, dictatorships. Th those are, and those are uh, political um, uh, conditions that influenced what, uh, what happened. So I will make a few considerations uh, centered, of course, in the idea of the import of economic ideas, but uh, considering uh, the uh, basis of analysis, the field of economic, theoretical, and doctrinal ideas. Let us say that till that moment, till the end of the war, um, Portugal was uh, a corporative, uh, supposed corporative uh, uh, society, econ uh, uh, as you know, and uh, uh, but that corporatism um, um, it mean, meant an economy dominated by an alliance of wealthy landowners, non-entrepreneurial industrialists and commercial bankers, and by a fascist state whose econ economic strategy aimed at maintaining social and economic order and political stability. And that idea of freezing society is the main idea, uh, I suppose, strategic idea of the period. Um, but that, uh, that strategy was um, supported by some economic prejudices and voluntaristic decisions with uh, no economic theory uh, and reasoning sustaining it. But the leg legitimization processes um, included a newly created corporative doctrine and indirectly a no corporative economic uh, theory. The problem it was that the, the material basis of the, the of the field economic ideas was quite uh, weak. Weak. The country uh, had only one universitary school dedicated to economic studies. It was the ISEF in Lisbon. Two economic sections in law faculties, an handful of academic economists, two short-lived research units. One of them dedicated to mathematical economics, and the other to corporative economics one scientific journal dedicated to economic issues, no real theoretical debate forums, and a small group that could be taken by professional uh, economists. This was a very uh, weak base. There was uh, no tradition at all of uh, corporatist ideology, uh, only in the political discourse, uh, some right-wing uh, movements, uh, but not very relevant introduced uh, some ideas about corporatism, but not in, in um, economics. But suddenly, economics became the mainstream of economics because of uh, uh, imposition, a bureaucratic imposition of political power. And so, is when is created here in uh, Coimbra the Center of e Corporative Studies, uh, led by Teixeira Ribeiro, um, well, he is the main center. And um, as there was no, nothing could be said, an indigenous corporative thinking, it, uh, what happened was a massive import of Italian ideas through what? Through uh, books and reviews and some visits of uh, Italian scholars, namely to ISEF, and uh, a creation of uh, a bureau of uh, Italian economic literature also in ISEF. We have tons of books of that era. Uh, reviews, most of law, more, even more than economics, and all the um, textbooks of them, Serpieri, De Vito, all books uh, exist there. They were offered by the Italian embassy. And um, even when the oh, professor, uh, I suppose, of Bologna, um, Bruno Biaggi, uh, is, I suppose is a, an obscure Italian corporativist, but he came to Lisbon in a very ceremonial way uh, to become doctor honoris causa. And some other uh, professors came to teach law and economics, like Giuseppe Valentini and some other Italians came uh, at the time. And came what was the global hero of the corporatist uh, movement, um, Manuelesco, the Romanian, uh, who came to, to Lisbon 
Uh, he made two lectures, two conferences at ISEC with all the political elites uh, uh, um, attending. And I suppose he was even um, um, at a meeting, a personal meeting with Salazar. This was the only case of he received an economist. Um, and uh, the book uh, of uh, Maralesco has two important books, Le Siècle du Corporatisme, that was never translated in Portugal, but the economics elite could read in French, so uh, there was no need to translate it. It was a very important book uh, in, the in the creation of a corporative doctrine. Uh, the other book was about external um, commerce. He opposes the proletarian nations to rich nations, but that book was censored because of the colonies. So uh, as a Portugal was a colonial power, the expression of uh, a proletarian nation was not, uh, did not fit well. So the book was uh, uh, nobody cares about, and was translated, and it, and it does not even exist in the library of ISEF. Um, so, um, and that became suddenly the mainstream. Uh, uh, the mainstream. Here they were published uh, theoretical um, papers here in Coimbra, but most of them were uh, simply uh, transplants of uh, Italian uh, authors. Um, there was no even, translations were only a few, only one of the corporatists, uh, Ugo Spiritu, was translated, but Ugo Spiritu, uh, I think it was a mistake because Ugo, uh, he was someone of the Legion together of a fascist group that decided to translate it, but who was spirit to have the idea of nationalizing uh, industries and uh, that the idea did not fit with uh, Portuguese corporatism. So who was spirit, I think it never came to Portugal, only the book was uh, 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 translated. So uh, of course uh, there were other, other um, schools or the stream strands of, of, of economics namely an eclectic economics that was the Portuguese tradition since the 19th century, mostly inspired in French uh, literature, uh, social economics, uh, some liberals, in, in spite of the fact that the, the liberal political consequences were never imported because there was no liberalism, no real liberalism in, in the country. Uh, there are, there's a lot of literature of descriptive economics, mainly about uh, financial and monetary issues, and neoclassical economics. It was uh, absolutely uh, uh, In spite of being internationally dominant, uh, they had a mini uh, uh, neoclassical uh, authors had a minimum influence in Portugal. Neither a face in the infallibility of the markets, nor Valrasian commitment with mathematization of economics, nor Marshallian focus on marginalism was acknowledged at the time by the um, uh, by Portuguese economists. And the, the, the um, a limited fluency in English was another barrier to the import uh, of uh, uh, most of the scholars that have a juridical training more than economic uh, training. So uh, Robbins came in the 30s to, to ISEF to make also a conference where I suppose he, he must explain his new conception of uh, economics based on the scarcity idea, but uh, there are no scientific results of that. It was a ceremonial uh, uh, reception and uh, with no uh, scientific uh, co uh, consequences. After that, in, in, in respect um, of um, the, the, the doctrines, corporative interventionism was, of course, the uh, the, dominant, the dominant idea, that cooperative interventionism was uh, meant uh, to create an enormous, a huge uh, bureaucratic apparatus, uh, apparatus, but not really corporations, they exist only after World War II, and um, uh, that doctrine was elaborated in university, that was, subject, was submitted to a process of uh, corporativization, let us say, uh, by no, and by no academic ideologues, political leaders, and uh, journalists. The bulk of the doctrine was to build up an highly regulated capitalism 
uh, everything was regulated, production methods, investment, prices, wages, interest, rate, interest rates, foreign trade, etc., in order to freeze economic and social relations at the expense of development. Uh, by this, um, with the experience um, of the war, um, came uh, an, another um, doctrinal strand emerged. We call it uh, developmentalist. It was made uh, particularly by engineers, uh, but they were not uh, powerful enough to impose their ideas. They suggest another type of, uh, it was an indigenous, indigenous uh, creation. In Spain, there was something similar, but there was not a case of import of ideas. It was an indigenous creation. They were authoritarian, uh, anti-competence, but they hated the corporatist uh, apparatus and consider um, an, obst an obstacle against development of the country, and they want to impose a new kind of uh, interventionism. New kind of well, and there existed liberalism, uh, as I say, as, as, as a doctrine, was uh, uh, had a very limited uh, uh, literature, I suppose, but I could not find, if I came, there was a translation of Hayek's uh, The Road to Safdom by, by the end of the war. I looked at the National Library, I could not find that edition that I suppose was made, a translation made in Coimbra. Anyway, nobody it, it stayed unnoticed. Uh, but I have a reference of that edition. Uh, but that means that liberalism has no social um, uh, impact. Well, <clears throat> um, that process of import of ideas was, of course, a, was an expression of Bourdieu, over-determined by the social and strategic setting uh, in which the import occurs. So the import came from Italy because Italy was the legitimation of that experiment of authoritarian capitalism. And said, but the, the vehicles of the import uh, were, uh, what were those vehicles? As I said, uh, Journal, Italian journals, I'm not sure they were read, that uh, someone read them. Uh, books, yes, the textbooks uh, are signs that they were studied. And, and some visits um, to, and some visits of Italians to, to Lisbon. There are no Portuguese economists graduating in Italy, nor visiting uh, Italy. So the relation was, those were the vehicles. The, the, we find no more, um, no more um, uh, signs. Uh, I shall say even the Bank of Portugal, the Central Bank, had a research department. And in this time, there was no one of the members was graduated in economics. They were self-taught economists. Uh, it was the signs of the week of the, of, of the field. Well. Um, the, um, uh, in, the, the, the French, uh, French uh, economists uh, kept his importance. They were not dominant, as I said, by bureaucratic reasons, but they kept his importance. The main textbook uh, that everybody in East Africa was Clément Colson, um, uh, the, the exact title of the book somewhere, called, and uh, Gaetan Piru. Gaetan Piru was, was more sympathetic to corporativism. That's why, and they, they came, uh, um, all of them, well, a lot of them, to Ishef. Ah, the Colson is, say, is a cours d'économie politique professé à l'école des ponts et chaussées. And Gaetan Piru is traité d'économie politique. Those were the two major theoretical references of that uh, eclectic, um, Okay. So the, uh, there was, as everybody knows, there was a, a, a very strong and old tradition uh, connection of Portugal with French culture, including uh, economic, uh, economic culture. Everybody could read in, 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 in French, so that's why there are no translation, and because the cluster of economists was also too small to justify uh, the edition of, of, of books in Portuguese. Uh, but uh, it, it's curious that in that time, um, because of the language barrier, uh, Isef uh, introduced the, in the library Marshall's Principles, but in the Italian edition of 1917. The first copy of Keynes' General Theory was a Spanish translation of 46. Uh, um, 
uh, uh, Peter, the theory of economic development only came in a Mexican uh, edition. And uh, Marx Capital came in French, but only in the 70s, the library included uh, Marx. Uh, so um, uh, that was a, a, a quite strange uh, bias in, uh, in the import uh, in, and in, in direct uh, uh, import of, of, uh, of the leading journals of in, in the economic, uh, ec economic theory, like uh, Quarterly Journal of Economics, American Economic Review, Review of Economic Studies, and Econometrica. Um, they all exist in the library, but they were bought, uh, they are complete, or almost complete collection, but bought after World War. Uh, in the 30s, they didn't exist. I uh, suppose the Econometrica came originally to Coimbra, because Jacinto Nunes, told me once that he used to come to Coimbra to read Econometrica. They, they did not exist in Lisbon, and they, you, uh, they were quite interested in those news. Uh, Bent Caras and the Center of Economic, Mathematical Economics, they never uh, had uh, econometrics yeah. in our reviews. reviews. The Economy of Finances was a journal, a scientific journal published by ISEF was very diversified as far as the papers issues are concerned. Anyway, only a limited number of papers, including papers authored by foreign professors visiting the Institute, were of theoretical uh, nature. So the situation described shows that till 45, there was a limited access with exceptions to external markets of ideas. The rule was a relative isolation. Um, isolation. Of course, I omitted, uh, and uh, one of the reasons, uh, because of the, the, the weakness even of the, the, the scientific journal of the faculty, is that the rule, informal rule of the time, um, uh, made that professors published compulsory the lessons in a book or in a mimeographed notes, but there was no uh, there was not compulsory to publish scientific articles. They published a lot of uh, notes in news, current newspapers, but not really uh, scientific. The, the, the main comp obligation was uh, the textbook. It was, it was, it was a erratic professor who has to publish the textbook of the discipline he was responsible. Well, after World War, immediately after, there was an important recomposition of the the ruling coalition in the country, industrialists became very important because the war showed that uh, an isolated country with no industry was quite a dangerous uh, and uh, unsustainable uh, situation. And so, uh, and in, in, in the field of, of theory, there was what I call here, I don't know if very correctly, a process of creative destruction. That means that uh, corporative economics collapsed immediately and it, Italian relations with Italian uh, 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 economies vanished suddenly, immediately. And uh, um, what happened is the neoclassical Keynesian synthesis came into, into the country, into Isaac, namely. The main vehicle was the, the, the meetings of OEEC. Uh, Jacinto Nunes, that was one of, uh, at the time, a young economist that participated in Portuguese delegations in OEC, uh, said uh, several times that they were um, confronted in the meetings with economists that had a totally different language. Well, American and English economists, they spoke in English. This was the first uh, difficulty. And then they used conce uh, concept, uh, economic concepts. They didn't know what they, what they meant. And, and uh, uh, they analyzed uh, and, and thought about the situation and immediately in 49 made the important reform of economic studies and introduced the, the new conceptions uh, that in the Western world. I mean, uh, the neoclassical uh, economics that had no tradition at all and, um, and Keynesianism. Um, someone uh, yes, they told about the Brazilian case and the idea that uh, the, uh, that theoretical innovation created a dualistic system, the modern, let us say, modern universities and foundations and uh, the old ones or heterodox ones. Well, as we have uh, uh, just one uh, 
faculty, the split was inside the faculty. You have the old generation that keep the bureaucratic control and uh, went on uh, making their ceremonies with doctors honoris causa, with French economists. Uh, Amzalak uh, had seven or eight or nine doctor honoris causa in French universities everywhere. Uh, but they allowed the young, the young uh, guys to introduce uh, an, a modern syllabus. So they introduced the um, discipline of microeconomics, macroeconomics, econometrics, econo development economics, and international economics. And they took care of all these. Uh, you know, they were f for five, those professors, the, the, the main, the leader of the group was Pinto Barbosa. Uh, did, that he, he, he went very soon to uh, government cabinet as a minister, so um, he's not, not involved very much in day-to-day -day, um, activities, but he, he had a personal prestige that uh, allowed him to impose his assistance and friends to control the teaching uh, of, of uh, or university. And so there is a, a suddenly process of Americanization uh, of uh, the teaching because uh, all the new ideas, if, even if uh, produced in England, Norway, or else, came through the American, uh, American uh, books. Um, the, the, the tradition of mimeographed notes for the students uh, went on. Uh, Samuel uh, came uh, the first edition immediately to Istef, but they, they were used to prepare classes, not directly uh, for students to, to read and study it. And um, for a period, the two main textbooks were Samuelson, of course, and a French one, of course, because of the heavy tradition of uh, Raymond Barr. Uh, I remember a personal uh, conversation with Pereira de Moura that told me, you can read one of our, our Equivalent. They were not, in fact, equivalent. They were different theoretical traditions. But the, the students used, used the mimeograph notes of the, uh, of the, of the um, of professor. But for development economics, they used the American book of Benjamin Higgins, the development uh, economics. Um, I have notes. Uh, well, and uh, Alvin Anson where they copy the ISM, ISLM model uh, uh, and, so, and, and also about uh, monetary economics. Anson was uh, um, an important, uh, an important um, uh, reference. And they became to import all the main uh, journals, uh, uh, bought the collections, including the, the, the part that was published before, before the war. During wartime, there was no import at all. Um, so that came, uh, 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 um, but uh, the tr there, they continued to not having uh, Portuguese economists graduating abroad. Um, th there was not tradition, even with martial aid that in some countries um, um, was used to send economists and managers to US, uh, th that didn't happen here. Uh, as, as far as I could uh, note, there were some visits to World Bank, but, but uh, I, see, I suppose uh, uh, a little later in the 60s, when Portugal entered the IMF uh, world, uh, but uh, I suppose uh, there were not, uh, not real uh, the ceremonial uh, visits. Uh, Teixeira Pinto he was the professor of development, went to Santiago do Chile to visit Cepal. Uh, but those visits were not uh, um, studying, they, they, they did not stood for long periods and they obtained no graduations with that uh, connection. And the coming of foreigner uh, professors to Portugal, before the war there was only a, a relevant, um, uh, let us say, a, a, a professor not for one or two lectures or a week, but for uh, for a, uh, more, a longer period was Francois Perrou that came here to Coimbra because he was sympathetic to corporatism at the time, so he came to teach here, and he will be he became a, prof, a doctor honoris causa also after the war after he became an outstanding European economist, but others professors became to come to Portugal. One of them was uh, some Spanish, curiously. 
when uh, jo José Castaneda uh, came to his head in 1953 to teach the first course in econometrics. Uh, he stood for some weeks, but the course had four students, only four students accepted to go into the classes uh, of econometrics. Um, but uh, was was the beginning of, of, the, of the history of the, of the modern history, and the other Spanish uh, authors, uh, some uh, important in in the, the dissemination of um, of Keynesianism, like Manuel Torres, uh, that had an interesting book on theory of political eco of uh, economic policy, uh, came also for conferences and personal contacts, and also some mathematicians, French. Of course, uh, Malenvo, uh, René Roy, they came to a center of mathematical economics, uh, newly created uh, after the war, because the old center was disbanded, uh, because all these members were uh, expelled from university. And so there were no more uh, professors for mathematics, nor even mathematical economics, and it was uh, necessary to create uh, suddenly a new center and they had important resources because it was a big problem. And uh, professors became uh, fr those French, uh, uh, I suppose Malabo was engineer of origin, I'm not sure. Uh, but they were, they, they came uh, commonly for um, courses to prepare professors, not di directly to the graduating uh, um, students. So uh, we have a, a, a new uh, scene uh, with, uh, with uh, ideas coming from other, other places. And uh, we have uh, a, 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 a new doctrines. Well, corporative uh, doctrine uh, um, was at the reverse uh, in the 50s, in Ishtef, exactly because the, the reg political regime could survive to the collapse of dictatorships uh, in Western Europe. So, uh, cooperative apparatus went on, and so the need of a legitimation ideology went on. And then uh, Coimbra and Peixeira Ribeiro abandoned definitely, I suppose, corporatism, at least as a personal face. And it emerged in ISEF with Pires Cardoso and uh, some young uh, economists. But they, uh, well, they imported uh, and this new, new, new era, of course, uh, uh, had no tradition, had no indigenous uh, production of theoretical ideas. And they imported the idea, French ideas about reform of the firm and adapted, adapted to cooperative constraints. But they talk about enterprises, collaboration of classes in the, in the enterprise, and uh, less of uh, macroeconomics of uh, uh, corporatism. Uh, it, it stood for, and even they create that strange idea of a, a Portuguese corporatist school that has no, sen no sense. Uh, nothing existed as, uh, sufficiently solid and developed that it could be said uh, a Portuguese original. But the, 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 the main idea is that corporatism has nothing to do with fascism. It's a problem of uh, collaboration in enterprise and nothing to do with the political regimes. That was obviously the, the, the big problem uh, they faced. In, in respect of, uh, of, uh, of uh, doctrines, I, I, shall, I, can, I shall say that Keynesianism had no consequences because Keynesianism remained as a, a subject of uh, academic dissertations and papers, but with no influence in economic policy. Because, as, as you know, uh, the Prime Minister of Portugal um, considered Keynesianism a disease, is, is, is own, in his own words. And um, uh, they are not allowed. So Ke the Keynesians uh, were a new generation of um, technocratic economists. They uh, accepted political responsibilities. They entered members of cabinets. But they never proposed any kind of social reform or whatever. Because Keynesianism was just for uh, uh, university walls, but not for politics. What they brought to the public sphere was a technical discourse. Uh, we can see in reports of the state accounts, uh, everything changed. A new language, 
but not a new, a new economic uh, policy. E everything that is related in the Western countries with Keynesianism, uh, welfare state, that was, uh, uh, did not exist here. It's only corporative ideology to care about that kind of, of thing. Well, uh, the other question is the, the emergence of Marxism after the war uh, in, in the, uh, some anti-fascist movements and that uh, generated a, a first generation of economic, uh, economic um, economists, most middle class self-thought economists, all of them outside, uh, expelled from university, so, and gather around a, a, a journal named Revista de Economia. And the, 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 the ones who went abroad to study, one of them went to the Institutical Studies uh, Institute um, Statistical Institute for Oxford, uh, Maru Guerreiro, who was the man who created the national account system, was expelled as soon as he came. And another one that went to Zurich to study mathematical economics, Augusto Sada Costa, was also expelled from university and his dissertation refused as soon as he came back to Portugal. So uh, there was no uh, significant incentive to go to study abroad because the results were not uh, Brilliant. Well, um, in, in respect of, uh, of um, um, the vehicles, the, the import of ideas, uh, uh, they were uh, more important in this period, of course, more American literature uh, and not Italian in French literature. Books and magazines, they were everything updated at the time. The literature existed here and uh, was accessible. Um, uh, and international international organizations had a crucial, especially OEC, had a crucial role in the modernization, in confronting the backward uh, and provoking a catching up theoretical process. Um, uh, but um, uh, those were, I think, the most important uh, um, channels of uh, importing uh, ideas. Uh, Things like political parties, lobbying groups, uh, foundations, uh, and they had no role. And uh, study uh, ec foreign economists as limited, coming to Portugal, a limited role. Portuguese economists go graduating abroad as a very limited role. So uh, there are a lot of channels we consider in the several national cases that didn't work here. Uh, but uh, I suppose it, it has to do with um, the, 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 the characteristics of the regime and nationalist uh, ideology predominate, dominating nationalist. Uh, uh, in, in, um, in, I, I note that in uh, 65, I suppose, two Portuguese economists, Morteira and uh, Jacinto Nunes, for the first time attended a meeting of, eco of econometric society in Uppsala in Sweden. European meeting of econometric society. Uh, they presented a paper in the meeting. It was the first contact with the scientific, um, relevant scientific societies. Because the scientific society that existed during the war, Sociedade de Ciências Económicas, never uh, received any foreign economist or professor, and uh, after five or four years, just disbanded. Well, that's all for a moment.